Hey guys, and welcome back. I'm the Seven Swords, and well, this is back in regrowth. For those that saw my first series I was doing on regrowth, um, I'm kind of picking up there, although this world's a little bit farther along. Um, the original world has been removed. Um, for those who are wondering where it went, um, I got a new computer. None of the worlds came over. Um, I also deleted that world before that. Um, you guys might have seen the stream that was also in the playlist that this will get stuck into. Um, me and a friend were going to do a multiplayer series on this. He decided not to do it. And I said, okay. My wife is trying to be like a cat in the background. But, um, uh... So, originally we were doing it and we had just gotten to Pure Daisies. I had just been rewatching the series and decided to restart it from the beginning. Well, I was going to restart it from the beginning, but I was like, I don't want to work my way up to that point if I don't have to. And I remembered I had this world that I was just messing around in and I was like, might as well use that one. So, it's similar. I made my house in one of those um, burnt out houses again. Um... We had just gotten to day blooms and pure daisies, and I was turning stone and stuff into living stuff. Um, the only, the real big difference is, is that um, I've gotten past the it's essential the nature's essence has started. I haven't killed an enemy. I've done most of these seeds. I just need to do the nether seeds, which I need netherrack for that. And instead of having the table, I have the tablet because I chose to keep the tab. I chose to get the tablet instead because I didn't want to run back to my house every single second. I needed to go get more items, although I still do because I forget I have the tablet on me. Um, the other thing I did was I put these trap doors here to keep me from falling down here because I have a tendency to fall down here when this is open. I kind of wish that I could get these all to move at the same time. I probably could do it with redstone or something. But then I'd have to set up a redstone contraption, and that would be it. So the first few things I'm working on right now are... We have coal currently um, uh, breeding up. Copper breeding up. And is that iron? And iron breeding up. So that's currently what I've been working on lately. Trying to get those along. Um, so I mentioned in my last video that went up that you'll eventually get seeds to help you with bone meal. It's the skeleton seeds. Skeleton seeds, as you can probably guess, give me you the skeleton essence. And if we look at skeleton essence, unsurprisingly, you can get enchanting bottles, music discs, every music disc pretty much. Skeleton skulls, bones, and arrows. So that's your way of getting bone meal if you're not using Project E. <clears throat> On top of that, um, I created vats out of copper um, to make a to make a vat. Just so I can get you guys caught up on where we are right now. You put um, uh, copper in a cauldron shape, which creates a vat. Put four of them together, you can get, make it bigger. It keeps getting bigger as you make it. It's kind of like a multi-block structure, but I think it has to be a square, and I'm not sure how big you can make it. Um, this is a, um, a crucible furnace. Fuel it with lava. And then, come in here, auto-eject fluids. It accepts cobblestone from this side, auto-ejects the fluids into here. The ingot cast then takes the fluids and turns them into ingots. Which right now, now I'm doing seared brick, which really... We're going to need a lot more seared brick. We don't have nearly enough. Um, seared brick we'll eventually be using to get into further stuff. Which is, I think it's... No, uh, what the world enables. Um, to the nether and back. We have... Um, uh, we have... It's been fire for, framed. You, make, you get obsidian. Light up, you get the flint and steel, and then you go to the nether. Then you got one of some of these. Then eventually you get thievery, 
because if we pass over to the nether real quick, where is my nether portal? Ah, oh, there it is. Built it over there near the... I don't know what this thing is, truth be told. The nether portal is over here because I like it being away from my base. It also is built near this, what I call a nether shrine. Pigmen will spawn here, this nether truck here. I didn't build any of this. This was This was here before I... This spawns in the world, naturally. So, step into the nether real quick. First thing we notice, burning sand. Ow. But, you'll also notice if we look around, there's ore. Like, more than normal. That's because, in this world, we find, we find out when we get to the nether, as this quest book reveals to us, um... That we have come to the nether to find the pigmen are the ones that stole our um, our ore. Which kind of makes sense. Everything looks burnt and destroyed. The netherites must have activated something to transfer stuff from, something from the nether to here and something from the, here to the nether. They stole our ore. They probably drank, sent over a lot of heat. But they probably had a lot of it. Which would make sense with the burnt logs and the burnt buildings and all that. But the um uh, the next bit of information, I don't know if I ever actually said this after the the um ending of the campaign. Um I won't be doing the long I will be avoiding doing the long stretches of recording that I did for my last two videos that I did for the first series. I believe there were three series. There might have only been two. I, mean, I don't know if the third one ever went up. I originally had a regrowth series go up where I was building the village and I was focusing more on building a village. But this one I had, then, but the first one I was more of trying to get everything set up, which that's what I was doing with this one. But, um, uh, Right now I'm just trying to build things up. This is like, this is what I built for my beginning thing. This is like the best design I can come up with, personally, for the design. I forgot I got a tablet. So, first thing we're going to do, the next thing we're going to actually, not the first thing. Get the Man of Steel. Put the Man of Steel in here like this. And we get a mana distributor. The mana distributor does. If I put it here, I can then tell this to shoot the mana distributor. And we can put this here. And now I gotta go get a little bit more stone, and then I need. I think I need at least one more. Um, mana spitters. That or I can just. But if I break this, this here and this here, shoot there. This one shoot there. These are day blooms, as I mentioned in the last um, when I was playing of this. The day blooms will eventually die out. After three days, they turn to dead bushes and disappear forever. These are endo flames, my preferred form of. This, tra 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 this pressure plate's here for a reason, but I won't be getting into that until we have the redstone torch. But for the charcoal, throw charcoal down on this, and they suck it up. Now they're producing mana by consuming charcoal. Having so many of them, I believe that they produce. I believe that they that they that this can handle all of these produce. So I'm not sure who that is. We might look at we will I will look into a different system that will use smaller amounts of these with more mana, but that's when we get our mana network set up. Right now we don't have a good mana network. I'm just doing this to start the process. But what it does is when it shoots this, it evenly distributes the mana into both sides. As you can see, it's adding mana to both sides. Then the mana spreaders slowly move it around the circle, filling these first, then those, then those, then those, then those. And what happens is, not only is this a huge repository of mana now, but 
as you can see, these six, plus that one, plus those two, have mana spreaders pointing at the runic altar, which you guys didn't see. You guys saw the runic altar, but I never actually used it. We might be able to use it today if I can get to it, but we might not be able to. Um, the first thing, the, the next thing I need to work on getting, which was what I was working on when I think I was last playing this, I think I was working on when I last played this, is to get the, the Nether Neferia, to get Nether Essence, which we should have some. Here's some. So if we look at the Nether Essence's use, oh, we don't need to do this again. Know why I did it twice? But the Nether Ephirius of Ephirians is one essence seed, two lava buckets, a red powder, and a bunch of weak essence. Let's see if we have any red powder. We do not. So, much like I showed in my last one, if you take a single petal of any of the flowers, we're going to use red in this case because we need red powder, then use a pedestal, a pestle and mortar. You can then crush it down into a red powder. We're going to memorize that so we have it for the future. So we have red powder, nether essence. This contraption here takes weak, I put weak essence in up here. It goes into this hopper, then down into this work table. What the work table does is it memorizes whatever I crafted it. And then I can pull it out. I can just click it. It'll set up the recipe automatically. As long as I have everything down here, I can pull it out. Right clicking it keeps it locked in so that because it can only hold nine. And once it once you try to learn a new one, it deletes one of the ones you don't have locked. So lock the ones you want to keep. For the essence, we're gonna grab four essence. I'm gonna go out here real quick. I'm gonna break one of these. Place that down so that it regrows. I'm gonna take an essence seed. We also need two lava buckets, which I'm gonna get out of my transmutation table. Place down the essence seed. The four essences, floral powder. Grab out two lava buckets. and then the nether essence. Now these start spraying this with mana. And as we can see, all of these items together combine into nether seeds, which are slowly turning blue. Once they're fully blue, the system is finished. What you can do to speed the system along if you want, if you set this to items sparing the mana to the pool and then throw this in there, it'll suck up that'll suck up all the mana, which then this will be then be able to use the mana more quickly. But I'm okay with waiting, waiting and keeping my mana. You're also gonna need a living rock and your wand of the forest for any contraption for any time you're using that. Because much like with throwing a seed into the petal apothecary, throw a stone, a living rock onto this and then right click and there's our seed. As you notice we lost the buckets, no big loss. The death or seeds were worth. Which run in here. I can then learn death or seeds. One one one. We go in here and we look at this. We can see that I still have all these. I've been still learning all the seeds as I've been going. But what we can do now is go into here. Go back to this. Oh, that's why I was doing that because I haven't done it yet. I must have gotten those from a um, uh, <clears throat> from a from a chest in the world. You can find the essences in a chest in the world. But then you get that, and then claim this. Pick either of these, but I would rather go with the weak essence. Weak essence is more useful to me. Throw all this away. We've got our seeds. Now we can make dye seeds. And then there's one more seed you can make, but we haven't the stuff to make it yet, which is a very important seed. I will be making that before um, moving on to the next stone. But as you can see, regular infusion. So some materials don't seem to react quite as 
you'd hope to weaken essence. Making a new more potent infusion stone with this essence essence. To do this, take a weak infusion stone, and if we hit U on it, we notice that not that one. Oh. Regular infusion stone. A regular infusion stone takes four essence. Iron, dye, coal, copper, and tin. So we need dye essence. I forgot about that one. I forgot we need a dye essence, not nether essence. But we'll get dye essence in soon. But like I said, I want to get the other seed unlocked first. Because, again, it's a seed that is extremely useful. Especially if you're not... Well, for me, it's not extremely useful. But for anybody playing on a project without Project E, it's going to be extremely useful. Which I still need it because I need to craft something with it that I can't get normal. So let's go see if we can find us an Enderman. Um, my goals for the series pretty much are the same as they usually used to be. I want to build a village around here. Um, we may get guest stars appearing, but this is mostly just going to be me playing regrowth because. I want to get regrowth back out. I enjoyed what I personally enjoy watching it. Call me whatever you want, but I enjoy watching my own content. But um, I'm also hoping to get some interesting builds out of it. I also just like this pack in general. I have changed some of the configs since I played this world last. I didn't realize this world existed. I changed some of the config. But configs in order to adjust the world's behavior. Nodes are more popular, are more are less rare, which will technically be um, able to benefit from that eventually. Just to benefit from this, I do have two these. I do have a Klein Star, Swiftwood Winding Gale, and the Harvest Goddess Band. Um, for anybody who doesn't know what those do, the Harvest Goddess Band makes it to where plants around me grow faster. The Swift Ridding Gale, as you can see, gives me flight. I also can right-click it, and it will repulse away mobs. The Harvest Goddess Span's right-click ability, when I click it on the ground, will plant whatever I have in my inventory on the ground, or at least attempt to. In some cases, it will break itself. I may show some off of some of the, uh, the breaking itself, which makes weird things appear that shouldn't exist. And then the Klein Star is a battery. The Swift Four Footing Gale and the Goddess Band both need energy to work, except for the Goddess Band's ability to speed growth. That just runs runs constantly. As far as how the Klein Star, how you get Klein Star energy into the Klein Star, you take a Klein Star like this, you place it over here, it fills with energy. You place it over here, it drains the energy. You place it in there, it destroys it. Well, it converts it back into EMC. We'll be using that the Klein Star's energy to be able to fly. I mostly get the Swift Rolling Landing Gale for flight, mostly for exploration. Um, I don't really, I don't, I'm not really going to be using it to really just like to move around very much. Right now, I'm just using it to get around quickly. Again, I don't mind cheating if it speeds things up. If it's just something that would make it slow, faster, and it's not like I'm cheating in like something that will be something that I, I could build relatively normally. I can't explain why I'm cheating the way I'm cheating. I don't know how to explain it. I'm cheating the way I'm cheating because I think it's better. Here's some oil. Which will mark. Oil is a build craft thing. Um, normally I don't have a need for it in an e-pack because normally it's not something I need. To, I don't really need oil that often. But in this pack you kind of do. You run into the issue of the mod settings for this pack really do compress what you can do with it. The most important part of it is when working with this pack, you don't have a whole lot of power generation. The only power generation you really can get is build craft with engines. You do need power for some stuff. Um, I think I can think of off the top of my head now that I think about it. But there are some things we'll we'll run into them eventually, and that and that will be 
the show for it. Um, in the first one, we might have seen these. You might, I have probably showed these hives. We probably saw a few as we were exploring. Um, breaking them with a scoop gets you bees. I mentioned the fact that I wanted to do bees. I'm better at bees now. It's been almost a year since I last did the regrowth series. So, yeah. I'm better at bees now because I did go into the bees. I still want to look into bees. That's why I have this chest. For bees. This is just everything in general. Because organization is not my key factor. Red mushroom frozen here. I'm pretty sure they're 10, 10, 10, but actually that they can be seen as 10, 10. Destroy all this. Some of the stuff normally has an EMC value. It doesn't in this because of the way it's made. Seared brick doesn't. Um, all things. Um, I did get crack sand at EMC value eventually. There's no price to change it from crack sand to sand. And Changing it over just takes forever. Seared bricks. So let's open up this. Since I can't find an Enderman, they'll eventually come find me. Then you work. The world enables. Searing heat. So, we do this. We need a tool forge, seared faucet, crafting paint table, seared brick, tank, smeltery, and controller. Not that hard to make. A piece of glass. So, glass in the center with seared brick around it. Makes your tank. Makes controller. Makes this faucet. Oh, makes the um, drain. Casting table. Casting basin. Faucet. The only thing left is the tool station. Oh, the bricks themselves. I. I'm surprised I forgot that. Not really, actually. Okay, so go ahead and get these. Now, to make the um, uh, tool forge, we need um, the tool station. We also need a bunch of iron. Normally, you'd have to go through a whole bunch of processes to get to this, but since I have EMC to be doing this, because I've been growing things for a while, I can just get three blocks of iron. Need three blocks of any metal. Doesn't matter what. You need your tool station, which is this one. And you need some bricks. Three bricks across the top. Four, blo four blocks of metal. And then the four blocks on the side, tool station in the center, get you tool for. Which completes that. Then you have the casting. Then you have the um. Uh, then next we get a pickaxe and an iron and an ingot cast. Press that. We press that. Press this back down. Head outside. I'm gonna build it right here for now. I'm gonna move it eventually because I'm gonna move it to the blacksmith eventually. I don't have a blacksmith though, so I'm gonna just place it down here and then break it up later. Probably off camera. Seared stone kind of takes a minute to break. We may or may not use it as a decoration block. I haven't decided. So there, 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 and there. Next, we place down um, this in the back. This right there. Smeltery drain there. Same table goes here. Place down some seared brick here. Probably not going to have enough seared brick to build this completely. Or at least I know I don't have the, enough of the drains. No, we have enough brick. We just need the drain. Luckily, that's. Pumping away like crazy. I know a little bit about that particular mod that adds the furnace. I don't know a lot about it. Um, if you guys are watching and you know, feel free to post it in the comments. 
It is from uh, Miraculture. Same with the fish, which I don't know the fish either. So we put that there. Seared faucet. Place down one of the a block cast a block casting basin. Toss it over there. So normally you would use this for um, processing your metals next. I don't really like using it to process my metals because it takes because it's one of those things that's like it's slightly annoying to use. I think I might be able to. I might not be able to use that one. Let's see. Think pattern. So, as you can see, putting a man of steel pickaxe head, putting a man of steel with a pickaxe head pattern makes this a man of steel pickaxe head that's bronze level. This is only flint level, so, well, mining level. But pair of material modifiers remain. We're going to see it, how it works. So, with flint, pair of this. And then this mining level is currently flint. Now the mining level will be bronze, which is better. We can eventually get even higher using um, uh, more of the Batania stuff, but for now, mining level bronze is complete. You normally make living wood tools, which creates living wood with mana steel, which makes mana steel pickaxe and all that other stuff. I don't think I can with this in this mod pack. I think it's one of those, um, it's not possible. I forgot I did that. But, um, uh, um, so. That with that, oh, it does work. This is mining level bronze. One reason that this is the one reason that you might want to do this, which is actually really useful, is let's say I get this and I'm like, I would like to flatten a bit of this terrain out. I'm gonna walk over here and I'm gonna start flattening this terrain out. You notice how my how my um, durability is not going down at all. These tools are not unbreakable. That's not how this works. The tool is repairing itself very quickly. And how it does it is it consumes mana from the mana tablet and repairs it. For example, I take the mana tablet and I put it on this. That spins around. I then throw the mana, I then go over here with my pick. You'll notice the durability starting to drop. Not, probably not fast. Just, it is. And then I run back over here and I'm like, I want my tablet back. Suddenly my, my pick is restored. A couple other th options you have. If you want to continue on down this path. You can make this into a mana tablet. Although if you're going to do that, and I'm glad that it that I noticed it before I clicked make the ring. You want to drain your mana tablet first. So place the tablet in there and it will begin to drain the tablet. Draining the tablet does not take any energy from it. It just stores it. It's just moving it. It does not, there's no cost as far as I know. If there is, then well, there's a cost. But I don't know if there is. I don't think there is. You could also make armor out of the Man of Steel. Which I think it looks decent for what it is. It's basically iron armor enchanted. Used with mana. Alright, so mana tablet's empty. It does not have any mana in it. You come over here, combine it with four of these, turns it into a band of mana. Band of mana is different from the tablet in the fact that it is now a bubble. Put it on there. It also holds a little bit more mana, as far as I remember. Right, shift clicked on this to have it put it back in and it will start filling our mana band as long as they're in there they shouldn't despawn 
unless things change. But as far as I know, they don't despawn if they're inside of the um then if they're inside of the pools of mana. But so in this episode we covered a little bit more about seeds, a little bit more about the nether. I gave you guys about what the how the game goes about, what's happened. Really they just say the pigmen stole it. Truthfully, I'm not surprised. If anyone's been watching me for a while or knows me personally, they know I don't like pigmen. I was trapped in the nether for a long time, and I didn't like the and I didn't mean the pigmen did not get along well. But we will be restoring the world. The series has is coming back. I am regrowing it. Ha ha ha! Good joke. But um, for now. This is the end of the episode. I'm not exactly sure if I, I'm going to be recording. I think it's about 20 minutes, but I'm not entirely sure. But I've been the Seven Swords. I am currently wearing blue Man of Steel armor. When you get when we come back, I'll update you guys on how well my progress has gone. I might do off camera work. I might not do off camera work. I can't really t say whether or not I will. But other than that, thanks for watching. Bye. Say bye, Mr. Butterfly. He's shy. Later.